Yo, what it do guys, today we're going to run over a quick guide for fishing you can do within the plains of Eidolon. So, let's just get straight into it. To begin, we travel to Cetus, which is found on the planet Earth. This is a relay grounds for our Austrian allies before heading into the plains of Eidolon. So if you haven't done fishing before, then you're going to need some reputation standing with the Austrians. Either find Konzu just by the big door or use the fast travel menu to reach him quicker if you're having any trouble finding him. When speaking to Konzu, select the option that says Bounties, and simply complete the first bounty to get enough standing to redeem your first fishing spear. Now that you have enough standing, let's go talk to Fisher, Hylak, and boy oh boy does she have some great catchphrases. Now we want to select Browse Wares and redeem our first fishing spear, the Lanzo. Let's go ahead and equip our spear as a loadout slot in our gear wheel, so now we are ready to begin our fishing. As we look around the map of Plains of Eidolon, you'll see lots of ponds, a lake, and a widespread ocean towards the bottom. Let's head towards Gara Lake. Here we can learn and understand how to begin the mechanics for fishing. I recommend for your first time to begin fishing to do so during the daytime. Open up your gear wheel and wield your fishing spear. Use your default aim button to maintain a better line of sight and use your default fire button to throw the spear in the direction of where you are aiming. Also, a good tip here is to play with your audio on. If you hear bubbles, then aim your spear in the direction where you hear the bubbles to force a fish to spawn. There is a little fall off in travel distance when throwing the spear, so at a medium to long range, you want to aim a little higher above the fish to increase your success at catching them. Keep in mind the depth of the water. Some fish don't seem far away and that can be misleading. Keep practicing here until you feel like that you are comfortable. During the daytime, fish are much easier to see, but at nighttime you'll begin to struggle. However, High Luck also sells a reusable luminous dye blueprint, which, when thrown into the water, will highlight single local fish nearby in your area. They're ready for the pickup. This dye works just as well during the daytime as it does in the night. When observing the surface of the water, you may notice some ripples and splashes. These are called hotspots. It's always best to use your bait here to increase the spawn rate of the fish that you are after. As you continue to unlock more spears, dies, and baits, you'll be able to select your own wheel of them when you equip your first spear. Consider it like a sub-menu or a second inventory holding all your fishing supplies. This way, you don't have to overload your gear wheel with all the spears, baits, or dies. When you have successfully caught a fish, you will notice at the top it displays the fish name and then underneath the size of the fish. There are three sizes of fish, small, medium, and large. The difference between them is that the bigger the fish, when cutting them with high luck, you will generate more fish meat, more fish scales, and more fish oil per fish. You won't however gain more organs from the size of the fish. Inside the bottom right, you will notice the kilograms per fish. This is just the weight class. This doesn't really mean anything, but you can kind of set your own personal record as to how big the fish is that you caught. Resource boosters will work with any successful fish catch, so instead of catching just one fish, it will double as a reward to two fish per one fish caught. Using a Smita Gavat when she procs her charm ability will also increase this. So for example, if you catch one fish with no buffs, well then you just catch one fish. But if you catch one fish with a resource booster, your catch then doubles two as a reward. And if you have charm active at the same time, your one fish will quadruple to two fish rewarded to you, but for only catching one fish. This is heavily favourable and should be used when fishing and mining at all costs to help that grind. A small change in the weather is always a good thing. The downpour of rain will increase the spawn rate of all fish, so make sure you keep an eye out for that weather. A small shout out here to a couple of warframes that can interact very well with fishing. Number one, Ivara. You can make use of our zip lines. This will give you a better overhead angle when fishing, especially in some spots that you couldn't naturally and normally reach. Also, her stealth is great for any unwanted visitors, leaving you in peace to just fish away. Number two, Volt. As he moves around, his passive is generating extra damage. This will be consumed by using his next attack, which means it can be applied to fishing spears. 
Bolt can use any spear on any fish and catch them in just one throw. Providing you a good amount of passive buildup, I normally see around 20 to 30 passive damage, so a quick spin around on the spot does the trick and I can catch any fish. Some of these fish will require a different bait or even a different time zone in order to catch them. There are free spears, but you can use any spear to catch any fish. However, that being said, each spear does different damage, impact, puncture, and slash. So using the correct spear on the correct fish will always allow you to one-shot catch that fish. Using the wrong spear may mean you just have to take a few more than one successful hit. So let's go ahead and break down the fish, the baits required, and the spears needed to help your experience at the time and location to help find your catch. Here on the screen, I've created an image to help understand all of the information that you need. I will also include this image in the description below, but let's go ahead and go over it anyways for the sake of it. The key to this image will always go fish name, then fish bait, then fish and spear, and then the time of day to find the fish. All text marks with an asterisk are mandatory, and pepper bait is not a requirement. However, it helps increase the spawn rate of fish during daytimes. So we're gonna head over to Gara Lake and break down the first fish on the list, the Chark Eel. Now you don't actually need pepper bait. As you can see, it's not marked with an asterisk, therefore it's not mandatory. But because it's part of a daytime fish, it means that you can use pepper bait to increase the spawn rate and the likelihood of it being within the water for you to be able to catch. As for the spear, as any, any of the spears will go ahead and do. You can find this fish during the day and the night. Next we have the moorfish. Just like the charkill, it's peppered bait during the day, it's for any type of spear, and you can only find this fish during the day. And finally we have the norg. Now you will be needing norg bait, this is a requirement. As for the spear, we use perum. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use lanzo or tulok, it's just that they're nowhere near as good. Perum is exactly what you want and you will only find this fish during the night time within the Plains of Eidolon. Let's now look into the ponds. As you can see, there are plenty of ponds scattered all over Plains of Eidolon, but we're going to look at the one located around Twin Horns. There are a few enemies nearby, but once you handle them, you won't need to worry about patrols or future disturbances. And because it's located right outside Cetus, this makes it a nice area to focus your pond fishing for a quicker extract and an overall pleasant experience fishing here. So we have the first fish, the Kuk Kuk. Now you won't really be needing peppered bait, but it will help. You can use any spear, and this is a day only fish. Next we have the Yogwan. Again, same goes with the bait, any spear, and once again, a day only fish. Next up we have Mortis Lungfish. Peppered bait, Lanzo and Perum spear, so the two lock is not as effective and it spawns in the day and also the night. Finally, we have Kufal. Now, Kufal does require Kufal bait. You will be needing a Lanzo Spear for the most effectiveness, and this is a night-only fish. And lastly, we have the ocean. As you can see, I have marked the bottom right-hand side, but you may prefer fishing on the left-hand side. For this purpose, I have just chosen my favorite area, but you can always choose yours, so it doesn't matter where in the ocean you guys fish. Right, and now we're down to the last few fish. Let's start with Gupola. You don't need pepper bait, but as per usual, any fish that's out there during the day, you can always go ahead and use that. Any spear will go ahead and do, and it's a day and night fish. Trelok is exactly the same with the pepper bait, but Tulok and Perum are the best spears for it. Lanzo is not as effective, and it is a day only fish. Karkina and Shirak are a double deal here. Both require Twilight Baits, both can use Lanzo and Tulok to catch them efficiently, not so much with the Perim, and both day and night fish. Mercury requires Mercury Bait, Lanzo is the best spear for it, it is also a day and night fish. And finally we have Glapids, which requires Glapid Bait. Perim is the spear of choice, and you will find this at night time only. So, thank you guys for watching my guide on Plains of Idol on Fishing. It's a small request to ask, but any feedback or ratings left on the video below are much appreciated to help indicate how I'm doing with these guides. And finally, if you do enjoy my guidance on Warframe, then please smash that subscription button, and I'll be seeing you guys on the flip side. Peace!